Amen. Thank you. May take your seats and uh, thank you for the worship team ministering to us. I hope you are all well and I'm sure you are all fresh this morning. I, I won't know about tomorrow morning, but I know you're all fresh this morning, ready to just fellowship together with God's children. Isn't that wonderful just to come together and worship the Lord here? Amen. We, you know, we've got so much liberty in this, still in this nation that we can come together and worship the Lord freely and come and, you know, declare His name, worship Him, and also walk as a Christian in this nation. Many nations are not allowed to do that. They are persecuted. We don't know what persecution really is. Can you say amen? Amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering here this morning. Amen. Thank you. Fill our hearts with gratitude. I hope you are all ready for the trumpet. Because we don't know. It's, we know it's going to sound one of these days. A trumpet call is going to come to us. And uh, we are going to be ready. Say to somebody, I'm ready. Het jy nie gehoor nie, sê vir jy maar naas, nie aan die kant. Sê, sê ek is gereed. Amen. And that is my concern, that is my heart for this house, that everybody in this house will be ready. When the trumpet sounds, we'll be ready. I know, if you, if you watch uh, YouTube, you'll see there are many different streams uh, preaching on the end times, and uh, they are not all the same. But I stay in the mainstream because I believe that is what the Word teaches us, that the Lord has gone to prepare, to prepare a place for us. And when He's finished, He's going to come back to come and take us to our place. Amen. You see, the church has got a different destiny even than Israel and the world. The church, those who belong to Jesus wholeheartedly, have got a different destiny. There's another purpose with the church. We are the ecclesia, the called out ones. God has called us out for a special purpose. Israel has got a different purpose. The nations of the world has got a different purpose. But as a church, the body of Christ, we are destined. Say, I'm destined. You must know that. I'm destined. I know there are people that say, yeah, we're going to go through this terrible time of tribulation. And uh, then after that, we're going to be um, ruling on this planet for a thousand years well that's maybe true but the church has got a destiny we are called as many things we are called as the body of Christ we are called as the, the soldiers of the Lord the army of God we are called as the house of God but we are also called as the bride And people forget that. But Jesus told us a parable to make sure that we don't forget. Because He's the bridegroom. Can you say Amen here this morning? Amen. If you're too quiet, I'm going to say to you, say Amen. What is happening in Israel now is very significant. And like my wife said, you go and check out last year I spoke about uh, what on earth is happening in this world. And I, I gave a teaching, a um, couple of teachings. So it was actually a series on the end times. And it takes time to speak on the end times because it's a vast subject. But I want to encourage you, go back. It's on YouTube and you go and see. And uh, what is very significant is it's happening now right in front of our eyes. Okay. And there's no turning back now. Amen. There's no turning back now. We're going forward now. Amen. Amen. There's no turning back. So, so things, now, are you listening to what I'm saying? Things are getting accelerated. I've, I've told you things will be accelerated. You know that what happened when Hamas 
uh, entered or invaded Israel, it was it took them by a surprise. They were they were not prepared. They were not ready. Even though all the signs were there, they were not ready for what what came. They never expected Hamas to invade them. They got so used of all the rockets being fired upon them that they never thought that they would be invaded by Hamas. And they've paid a they've paid a terrible price because they were actually asleep. So we are not going to be asleep. We are going to be awake. We are going to be aware and we are going to be alert. When the trumpet sounds, we're going to hear the trumpet. We are going to be ready when Jesus comes for his bride because he is coming for his bride. So Israel is God's time clock. If we want to know where we are, look at Israel. It already began in 1948 when they were established as a nation after almost 2000 years. Remember they were scattered all over the world. 70 years after Jesus was crucified, they were scattered. And the prophecy that Jesus gave, he said that this nation, this Israel, my people will be scattered all over the world into the nations. And the temple will be destroyed and not one stone will be left upon the other. It happened 70 years not after Jesus uh, was crucified. It happened. And they were never ever after that a nation until 1948. So what happened? 1948, God started coming back, turning back to Israel because the word says that he, he will do that in the end times. Why did he, why did he uh, actually... He brought a blindness when they rejected Jesus as the Messiah. He brought a spiritual blindness upon them so that they would not be saved until the end times when God will begin to turn back to them. So since 1948, first of all, God gave them back. He made them a nation. He gave them back their, their land. Then in 1967, there was a war and He gave them back Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And now there's one thing short, and that is their temple that needs to be rebuilt. So, so they, will build, they will rebuild the temple after these wars that are coming now. Now, if we look at what's happening in Israel now, we need to understand that this war is like a trigger. You understand what I'm saying? A trigger or a detonator. You know, a trigger. It, it triggers something else. Because there's another war coming, Ezekiel 38. And we need to watch that now. We need to see. Because in Ezekiel 38, Russia will be involved. Iran will be involved. Turkey will be involved. And some other Arabic nations will get involved. And that is going to be a major, major, major war is going to threaten the existence of Israel. When those nations, you can imagine all those nations coming against Israel, launching missiles against Israel. But the word says in Ezekiel 38, on that day when they do that, then God is going to become so angry that He is going to intervene for Israel. And He's going to destroy those nations. Supernaturally, God is going to fight for Israel. That is when Michael, the archangel, is going to arise in that time. Now that war will then escalate through the tribulation period right up to Armageddon when Jesus physically comes back in his heavenly body. He's going to come back. Every eye is going to see him. But from now until then, something else is going to happen. The catching up of the church is going to happen. The rapture is going to happen. Can you say amen here? The, 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 the marriage of the Lamb is going to take place in heaven. And if you belong to Jesus, you are not going to be here, but you are going to be sitting with Jesus at the marriage table, at the banqueting table. Praise God. I want you to have that hope. The Bible wants us to have that hope. 
Because hope is a powerful thing. If you lose hope, it's terrible when we lose hope. And as Christians, we cannot lose hope. Here in Daniel 12 verse 1 we read, At that time, Michael, that time, this time now, where we are, in now. That time, Michael, the archangel who who stands God over your nation. God is speaking to Daniel and he's an Israelite. And the Lord says specifically, the angel says specifically, is God over your nation. He stands God over your nation, over Israel. He will arise. What does that mean? He's going to intervene. He's going to act for Israel. He's going to fight for them. Now, Michael is a very powerful angel. He's the, he's the warrior angel. He's the chief general of God's angels. All the warring angels. So he's going to arise. Then, the word says, then there will be a time of anguish, great distress, great tribulation for Israel, Jacob's trouble. That's going to last for seven years. Then the time is up completely. Jesus coming back. He's setting up his kingdom on this earth. Amen. It says here that anguish, that time of anguish is going to be greater than any since nations first came into existence. But at that time, every one of your people whose name is written in the book will be rescued. All God's people will be rescued. Come on, let's give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. Especially Israel. God will save them in that time. Now, we need to be wise now. Can you say amen? Amen. Say to someone, we need to be wise now. Afrikaanse woord is mooi, ons moet verstandig wees. Verstandig. There is another English word, prudent. We need to be prudent. Wise. Ons moet ingelig wees, soos jylle ons hier allemaal hier so. Ingelig wees. This congregation knows everything about the end times. If it, can you say amen? We know everything about the end times. Because many, through the years, many times I spoke about the end times and the Lord showed me in 1988 in a night vision that Iran is going to get involved. And when that happens, I tell you, there are only milliseconds left. Jesus is going to come for us. Amen. In 1988, most of the Christian world that believed in the rapture was awake. They were ready for Jesus to come in 1988. Because in those days, I was a young Christian, only four years saved. I was a young Christian, and there were many books written in those days, men of God that understood the end times and taught us about the end times, and uh, we were all waiting for the Lord. And in that time, the Lord gave me a night vision, and I understood from that, it's only going to happen when Iran intervenes. 1988, Iran was not ready for that. They were battling their own internal problems and so on. But now, where we are now, Iran is actually on the brink of producing a nuclear weapon. Because they know that Israel has got atomic bombs. And they are not going to just, you know, attack Israel without being sure that they've got their own atomic bombs. And I think once they got it there, if they can get an atomic bomb bomb that I don't think they're going to get, I think Israel will take them out before they can produce an atomic bomb. So we are very close to that. And we need to watch now what is happening. Because this is what happened now last Saturday. What happened, this war that started, could easily and very quickly escalate into Ezekiel 38.
things might surprise us. It could happen much quicker than what we anticipated. Because we are right there. It could escalate into Ezekiel 38. But I'm, I'm giving you these nuggets now so we can know when Iran and Russia, when they, and, and Turkey, those three nations, when they get involved themselves, we must know we are in the Ezekiel 38 war. I'm not saying this one is going to escalate. I'm waiting to see. Amen. So we need to be wise now. What is important now is to focus on the harvest. Say the harvest. There's a great harvest. Amen. There are many people that are asking questions now. They don't know Jesus. They are seeing what is happening in the world right around them. They're getting scared. They're losing hope. It is a time for us as Christians to tell them, to speak to them, and to give them hope, and tell them, if you've not surrendered your life to Jesus, it is time now to do that because He is like Noah's ark. He's going to rescue us. He's going to save us. Can you say amen here? We need to tell them, don't be discouraged. Put your faith and your confidence in Jesus because if your faith and confidence is in Him, you will live forever. And this world cannot hold you back. There are so many things about the tribulation that I understand. I don't want to speak about it. It's too terrible, too horrible. I don't want to speak about it. Because if we really understand what is coming in the tribulation period, we will be really terrified. The angel said to Daniel, there's never ever, there's never ever since the beginning of nations been a time like that. It's going to be horrific. More than half of the world's population is going to die. More than half. That's four billion people is going to die in the tribulation period. COVID, there was nothing to what is coming. Earthquakes that we have seen up to now. Listen, you see what has happened. Just go and check out what happened over the last 24 hours. As far as earthquakes are concerned, you'll see what is happening. I'm not even speaking about when the Antichrist appears. Because they're, they're going to take, they are totally going to take control over mankind. People's brains are going to be connected to the cloud. People are going to become like robots. People won't be able to buy and sell unless they have the mark. It's going to be enforced upon people. As a matter of fact, many people are going to take it. You know, they're, just, they're going to take it because they're too scared to die. So we don't want to go there. I'm just saying what we need to do as a body of Christ, the church. God has not destined the church to go through the tribulation. I believe that with my heart. I believe that God prepared a place for us. Jesus went back to his Father to prepare a place for us. He said so. John chapter 14. Go read it. He was speaking about a wedding feast. Now, what is important is now for, our, for this house to focus, God's people to focus on the harvest because there's going to be a great harvest. I mean, I believe that. That's why we built this building. That's why we, we are in ministry. Because what the Lord showed us is to, when the end time comes and people awaken, they become aware, they are going to run to the Lord. They're going to ask questions. They're going to seek help. Amen. And we're going to have more than one service. We only have, we've got one service now. And, you know, thankfully I'll be able to preach off the glass. But there will be an English service as well. Amen. So, what is our job? Our job is to wake up people and to lead them to Jesus now. That is what we need to do. Testify. Tell them, give our testimony. You know, tell our story to them. And tell them how that we come to Jesus 
How did we come to faith in Him? How He saved us and how He changed our lives? Give our testimony out to them because people want the answer. And there's only one answer and His name is Jesus Christ. Come on, can you say Him in here this morning? Listen, yeah, let's give Him a praise offering. Those, this is what the angel said to Daniel in chapter 12. He says, those who are wise will shine as bright as the sky. And those who led many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever. Praise God. This is how God sees us. He has put us here as the light of the world. The greatest harvest is going to come shortly after the rapture. There's going to be a tremendous big harvest, tremendously big harvest. But then it will be too late for many. We don't want, be, we don't want to be part of that group. Anybody here who would like to be a part of that group? Well, if we, if we act foolishly, yeah, we, we could be part of that group. And the rapture itself is going to be a, oh, it, it's unimaginable. It's not possible to even imagine what the effect is going to have on the world. The people are going to be, they, they are going to be totally, totally, totally hopeless. Children will be gone. Mothers will be gone. Fathers will be gone. Brothers and sisters will be gone. Chaos all over the planet. People running around seeking for answers. It's going to be a time of terrible chaos on the planet. There is going to be total chaos on the planet. And it's, that is when the Antichrist is going to step in and he's going to bring order. His kind of order. Satanic order. Amen. Now, let's move on. It is time to enter now. Say to somebody, it's time to enter now. I'm listening to what I'm saying. I know we've got some visitors here this morning. They haven't followed the messages. I'm, and I've started speaking on the year 5784, the Hebrew year for this year, where five means grace. Seven means perfection. God is bringing us to perfection. Eight speaks of covenant. It also speaks of a new beginning. Because when Noah came out of the ark, they were eight. And there was a new beginning, a new earth for them. And the four, this is what is important for us now. Because we are now in this year four. And that, that in, in the Hebrew, it means door. There's an open door. Like Noah's ark, there was, the door was open for seven days before the flood came. After Noah went into, he went through the door. Him and his family and the animals went through the door, into the ark. But they didn't depart immediately. It took another seven days before they departed. Because God was still, you know, giving people time to repent, to come back to Him. To enter the ark. So it's time now, like the wise, the, the wise virgins that we read about in Matthew chapter 25. Heaven's door is still open. That's what I'm saying. It's important to, to hear this this morning. The door is not closed. God's heaven's door is open for us. Isn't that a good thing for us? Amen. Um, you know, Valencia was this morning encouraging us to get into worship. Last Sunday morning, we had a well, I, I don't know about you, but last Sunday morning, for me, I had an encounter with the Lord. I had a, a, an acceleration. I just, you know, it was, I, was, I got so deep into the spirit, I thought the rapture was taking place. I was, I was accelerated in my spirit. And that's why worship is now so important. I'll get to that just now. But when we come together now, we should, we should think about that. Also in our own uh, private um, devotionals, we, we need to worship God. Can you say amen? We need to pray. We need to worship and pray now. Amen. So we need, a, we need lots of oil. Say to somebody, you need oil. We all need oil now. Lots of oil. Not just a little bit. Lots of oil. Too much. Amen. Lots of oil. We need lots of oil. Okay. 
So here in Matthew 25, the word says, but while Jesus was telling this parable so that we can understand in the end times what is happening, he said, but while they were gone to buy oil, these were the five foolish virgins. They went to buy oil because they, didn't, they ran out of oil. Now, if your car runs out of oil, the engine is finished. Just like that. If a Christian runs out of oil, we become foolish. <laughs> is that true? We can't, we, can't, we can't stay up with the Lord because we haven't got the, 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 the Holy Spirit power in us. But if we have enough oil, we'll keep up with the Holy Spirit in the end times. Come on now. So then those who were ready, say they were ready. Those who were ready, they went in. So there was an entering. There was a going in. We are there now. It's beginning. We are there right now. Are you listening to what I'm saying? We are there now. They went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was locked. After the rapture, the door to the marriage feast will be locked. Nobody else will enter into the marriage feast. Yes, in tribulation period, people will be saved because Jesus is the door to salvation. Can you say amen? But the door of the marriage feast, those who could partake and to be, to be the bride of Christ that didn't enter are going to stay behind. They are going to be called the foolish virgins. The door will be shut for them. They won't be able to go in after the rapture. It's too late. looking very concerned here this morning. Okay. Who will be ready? Who will be ready? That's a good question. Will I be ready? Will you be ready? When the trumpet sounds? Well, I'm going to give you some things so you can make sure you are ready. This is what I'm doing. Okay. Here in the book of Revelation, you can't see it there, it's too small on the board there. They have washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb and made them white. Revelation 7 verse 14. Those people, those who repent properly. That's what I'm saying. Those who repent properly what do I mean sometimes we don't repent properly I want to emphasize that word this morning those who repent properly they will go in so how do we repent properly we deal with our pride. We deal with our pride. I need to deal with my pride every day. Are you here this morning? Have you got something called pride? Of course you have something called pride. It's part of its old nature. It, it is that old wild olive tree. That old sinful nature, we all have that. We got it from, from uh, Adam. But we have to deal with that every day. Jesus said we must take up our cross every day and follow Him. Why? Because He was actually speaking about our pride. We need to deal with our pride. Jullie weet mos, die groot ek is, the great I am. Hallo? Jullie saamt my vanmorgen. We need to deal with that oak every day. Because that, that pride is holding us back. Pride is, is making us stumble. Pride is distracting us. Pride is taking us into all kinds of, 
you know, emotions and all these kinds of things. Our pride. We get angry. You know, we lose our temper. You know, what we do? We say things we shouldn't say. That is because of pride that's still alive in us. See, when, when, when we were broken off, the Bible says, the Apostle Paul said, inspired by Holy Spirit, we are like that wild olive tree. A branch, branch was broken off and it was engrafted into the olive tree, the natural olive tree. So we became part of a new tree. We were a wild olive tree. So God, because of our unbelief, we were a wild olive tree. But when we come to Jesus, we are, we are actually torn off that wild olive tree and we are engrafted into the olive tree, who is Israel. And so God wants us to have that same nature, that spiritual nature that Abram had. Because Abram is actually, he's that tree. That tree of faith. But now here's the problem. The problem is for a while, that wild olive tree, that branch that is engrafted into the natural tree, has still got the same kind of... Before. That thing bore wild fruit, uneatable. But once that the, the, the juice of the of the Word of God, of the Spirit of God, is coming into that, that uh, wild branch. That wild branch needs to change now. There must be a new nature. Can you say amen? That nature is, is Christ-like because Jesus is actually the root of that tree. Come on now. Amen. So when I'm speaking about pride, I'm speaking about that wild nature of us. The carnal man. See, pride is the power of sin. That is what gives sin power. It is the root of all sin. R Actually, what we see sometimes, not you, not you here, sometimes we want to deal with the fruit of the tree. The problem's not there. The problem is the root. Are you here with me? If there's hatred in my heart, because pride is full of hatred, if there's hatred in my heart, the fruit that I'm going to bear is going to be bad fruit. Can somebody agree with me this morning? It's going to be bad fruit. I can, I can, you know, I can take that bad fruit and I can throw it away, but I can promise you if I don't deal with my pride, I'm going to reproduce fruit again. Because pride carries a fruit. It's an old sinful nature. So Jesus said to the Pharisees, the scribes, He said to them, hypocrites, don't clean the cup from the outside. Clean it from the inside. Because if you clean it from the inside, it will become clean by itself on the outside. You see, this is what's happening. If I deal with my pride, what is happening? The fruit will go away. Those bad fruit will go away. So I need to deal with my pride every day. I need to, I need to remember myself every day that in 1984, that old Kovac got buried. He was put in the grave with Jesus. He was crucified with Jesus. I live near me. Come on now. Who has been baptized here in this place here? Anybody here? Yeah, quite a lot of people. If you haven't been baptized, I would recommend you get baptized as soon as possible by faith. Because the baptism speaks of a death. Okay, so do we deal with uh, counseling? By counseling? Can we deal with pride by counseling? Can we counsel it away? No, we can't. Can we uh, del get deliverance from pride? No. We can't. Many people go for deliverance. There's a place for that. But deliverance can't set us free from pride. Can we deal with it by inner healing? No. There's only one way. Yes, it. Humble yourselves before the Lord and He will lift you up in honor. I have to humble myself. Saulus here. 
Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. For if you live by its dictates, you will die. But if through, here's a key, if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. So it's by the power of the Spirit of God that I can deal with my pride. It's the Spirit of God that gives me the power. That's the oil that I need. It gives me the power to overcome this pride in my life, to overcome my sinful nature. That's why I need to pray. That's why I need to worship the Lord in spirit and truth. Because in those moments, I receive oil from God. I receive power from Holy Spirit. Without Holy Spirit, I cannot deal with my pride. Amen? Does it make sense? Here in Revelation 4 verse 1, we read, John the apostle was on the island of Patmos. He says, it, it was the Lord's day. It was actually a Sunday, the Lord's day. It's good. And I was worshiping in the Spirit. I was worshiping in the Spirit. Suddenly, I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet blast. It, there's just something about this, worshiping in the Spirit. Then in, verse, uh, in chapter 4, verse 1, he says, then as I looked, I saw a door standing open in heaven. And the same voice I had heard before spoke to me like a trumpet blast. The voice said, come up here and I will show you what must happen after this. What we see here is actually a, a picture of the rapture. What is going to happen at the rapture? That's why, brothers and sisters, what I'm saying, when we come together together, or oh, when we're at home, just remember to come into the Spirit. You know, some people can pray themselves into the Spirit. Some people can worship themselves into the Spirit. But we need to get into the Spirit. Because when we get into the Spirit, we get empowered by Holy Spirit. We get accelerated by Holy Spirit. We are getting the power to overcome sin. Let's stand.